This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 762, How I Spent Over $50,000 on Luxury Services Last Year, part two, by Ramit Sethi of IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com. And hi again, everybody. My name is Dan, and I'm your host here on the show. I'm here every weekday reading to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And this episode is brought to you by SendPro Online from Pitney Bowes. SendPro Online software makes it easy to save time and money no matter what you ship or mail. Print shipping labels and stamps right from your desk and access discounted rates. You can try it for free for 30 days and get a free 10-pound scale when you visit pb.com slash finance. That's pb.com slash finance. And our article today is actually a continuation from yesterday, so if you're new here or if you're skipping around a little bit, it would probably be best to hear Monday's episode first, that is episode 761. But if you did that already, let's get right to part two of our post as we continue optimizing your life. How I Spent Over $50,000 on Luxury Services Last Year, part two, by Ramit Sethi of IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com. How I Spent More Than $50,000 on Luxury Services Last Year and Why I spend over $50,000 a year on items that could be considered luxuries, and I make no apologies. In fact, I love them. I earn them, I enjoy them, and they help me spend my time the way I want to. These luxuries are part of how I define a rich life of living more. Do I need them? Of course not. Could I be happy without them? Yeah, of course. I was happy then, when we grew up middle class on one income, my mom stayed home, and I'm happy now. And if I had to start again without all the luxuries I now have, I could do it tomorrow. But these make me happy and I can afford them. So I enjoy them, guilt-free. I get to wake up slowly, get dressed, walk into the living room, and check out the view while I brew some tea. Then begin my day, knowing that everything else is taken care of. So take a look. Here are three examples of luxuries in my life. My personal trainer. Everyone says being healthy is important, but I wanted to make it a priority of my time and spending. That's why I hired a personal trainer for $16,380 a year. I see him three times a week and I never miss a session. Together, he's helped me change. You can see the pictures in this post. After each workout, he records that day's workout program, things like sets, reps, and weight, and emails it to my assistant who compiles it and sends it to my nutritionist. This costs me $3,000 a year. My nutritionist has his IFBB Pro card and evaluates my progress picks and workouts, responds to my questions within 24 hours, and adjusts my diet every single week. And that weekly updated diet goes straight to my personal chef. I love home-cooked food and I want it to be in line with my training requirements and I don't want to learn to cook. The chef gets the new week's diet and cooks it for me using precise measurements. He even knows what I love, spicy food, and what I don't, no tomatoes. So every morning I open my fridge knowing I'll have fresh food ready and waiting for me. Last year, I spent $21,635.64 on my personal chef and it was worth every penny. All of this happens invisibly. I have a system that automatically routes the information from the right person to the right person. I just focus on showing up and working as hard as I can and I get massively accelerated results. What used to be an overwhelming, complicated time suck is now an extremely valuable system that happens automatically. First class travel. I wrote about my system set up for travel, which includes a 40-page document detailing my favorite seats, airlines, and travel preferences. Travel is important to me, and my philosophy is to travel anytime I can for business or fun. In 2014, I took a last-minute skiing trip with my friends. I went to Asia on a week's notice and flew to Barbados for my birthday. I also have a second apartment in San Francisco where I spend some time. In total, I spent $31,177.37 on first and business class flights last year. Remember, these are my luxuries for me at this point in my life. They would not have made sense five years ago because I wouldn't have been able to afford them or appreciate them. And they will probably be very different 10 years from now. But they are the definition of a rich life, a life of more to me. And that brings me to you. You deserve more, not less. Yesterday, an IWT reader wrote to me about leaving behind a group of frugalistas she's gotten to know. Quote, Frugality has its place, but I couldn't even write about buying a riding lawnmower for my half-acre yard without 20 comments about, A riding mower is not a necessity. I have one acre and use a push mower in the 90-degree heat. And here I thought I was being frugal by not hiring a lawn service. Whatever. End quote. Jim Rohn said, quote, 
you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, end quote. If you surround yourself with people who constantly think about less, how can you ever expect to get more? Can you imagine me 15 years ago in high school talking about having a private chef? It would be absurd. The difference is now you're not forced to sit in a classroom with random people. You get to control who you hang out with. You get to control what you want. There's no shame in wanting more, no matter how many people tell you to be satisfied with what you have. How could they want more? Many of them have been surrounded and inculcated by generations of people who only knew the same. They don't know any better, but you do. When it comes to luxury, more, business, fitness, and everything I'm working on, I'm happy, but I'm not satisfied. And I want you to know that you can want more and you can get more. In fact, you deserve more, but only if you put the work in to get it. Now, there are two kinds of people who will read this post today. Some will read it as intellectual entertainment and say, nice, nice, a personal chef, that'd be nice, someday. They will take no action and next year, in January, they'll start the cycle of making big promises to themselves, getting motivated, and falling back to identical patterns all over again. Another group will read this and say, this year is it, I want more, not less, and I'm willing to change to get it. A personal chef never happens by accident. Neither does a $10,000 raise or a successful online business. No luxury does, no matter what your definition of a rich life is. You have to intentionally change to get it. Now, the choice is yours. Which will you be? You just listened to part two of the post titled How I Spent Over $50,000 on Luxury Services Last Year by Ramit Sethi of IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com. And once again, SendPro Online is an amazing online software that helps you save time and money no matter what you send, letters, packages, overnights, or flats, and you'll always pay the right amount. It comes with a free 10-pound scale that weighs and calculates rates for you. Plus, you can compare options between USPS, UPS, and FedEx right at your fingertips. USPS postal rates just went up, but by using SendPro Online, you get discounts of up to 40% off USPS priority mail shipping and get 5 cents off every letter you send. No additional equipment is needed. Just log onto your computer and use your own printer to print shipping labels and stamps. SendPro Online is only $14.99 a month, and listeners can get a free 30-day trial by visiting pb.com slash finance. Experience the convenience of SendPro Online and try it out for free at pb.com slash finance. And that's going to do it for me here today. Thank you so much for being a regular listener and for clicking subscribe. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you right back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.